just because you guys are here, you did not miss the finale that's literally airing at this exact moment. This is maybe, I don't know, this is nicer than my television. I'm not gonna speak for anyone else. Uh, my name is Jarrett Weisselman. I'm so excited to be here. You guys know, I don't have to tell you, this is literally one of the best shows on television with like one of the coolest, most interesting cast. So let's waste no time with me talking. Please help me welcome to the stage, Gina Rodriguez. Oh my God. Jaime Camille. Hey! Jaime! Jaime, Jaime, Jaime! Sad card! <laughs> Andrea Nevado. Andrea Nevado! <laughs> yeah! Hey. Justin Baldoni. Justin Baldoni! Where is Justin going? Oh, no. Yeah, yeah, I'll grow glass. Yeah! 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 And Yvonne Call. Yes, I'm Anita with the Namaste. Thank you. Uh, wow. Guys, the energy. I love it. about 6 a.m. Is this? Is, is it, this yeah. on? Hello. Is it on? It is. Yeah. It is. We're all loopy. Uh, We're all loopy. It's like 6 a.m. So we got a lot of energy. Yes. yes. Second win. Yeah. Uh, second win is right. That's right. It's coming in. Well, Jaime, you actually teed off my first question very, very well because I want to ask each of you to begin how you got your SAG cards. Oh. So, so Jaime, since you were flaunting yours upon arrival, <laughs> why don't you begin? I got my SAG about, I don't know, eight, eight, eight years ago. And I think it, I don't remember the project, <laughs> but I because I'm an immigrant, that's why I don't know the, the rules of this country. I'm learning. Tag as immigration. You came out with your but, green card. I was but, all about it. <laughs> <laughs> you were like, guys. Now we need it because you never know what's gonna happen with this political <laughs> thing. I might get kicked out of the country. Don't say that. Don't say that. So um, let me think. I think I believe it was a movie. I believe it was a movie, but I. I I truly don't remember because I, I, I had to, no, listen, it's it's a different thing for me because I'm from Mexico City. Is anyone? Uh, That's not an excuse for everything. Come on. on. It's, it's, it's not an excuse for everything. Get out of here. I mean, we love you. I'm sorry, I kicked you because I'm from Mexico. And um, he understands. He was no. late to dinner because he's from Mexico. I he will. <laughs> it, I'm from Mexico, so give me a second. <laughs> I, I will Chilango. I will remember my story and I will tell the story. Okay. Yes. yes. Well, we're gonna we're gonna loop back around. Anyone with it on the tip of their story. tongue? Thanks, honey. I remember. Yes, Andrew, please. It was a big deal to get my SAG card, by the way. Um, okay. And what what are you implying? And I'm not from Mexico, so. No, seriously. I mean, I remember like there was a catch twenty two. If you want to book a job, you have to be a SAG member. But in order to be book a job, yeah, you, you, you have to book a yeah. job. Yeah. So you to get an agent. You have, you to, have to get a job. Like, in order to get a job, you need an agent. Oh, yeah. Exactly. <laughs> something like that with me. Exactly. I wasn't. I'm sorry to. Call, I want to tell you something that, they, that I needed the sack to work. Because he's from Mexico. No, I remember, I'm remembering now. Yes. <laughs> anyway, no. I wound up booking. I went to booking an industrial, a medical industrial, where I had to play um, a severely depressed college student. And what was the medicine? Zoloft? It might have been something like I don't remember. I it was remember. over 20 years ago, girl. It was a long time ago. <laughs> but I mean, it was like a big deal to me because like I was on set and I knew I was getting my SAG card and. You know, and I got to play like a depressed person, so that was like a lot of fun. Side you know, effects of this medicine include suicide, depression, and most of the <laughs> Exactly, but it meant so it meant so much to me. It was like a big deal to get it, and you know, and the rest is history. Uh, mine was Law and Order. Yeah, no, we could clap for her. Let's yes. do that. <laughs> Law and Order. Law which and Order. The, which of the seven? Um, shit. <laughs> uh, the, the, law and, like the law and Order, the original. The original, okay. Yeah. Law and Order, nothing after. Law and Order, colon, nothing. Right. Yeah, law and yeah, Order, yeah. chung chung. Yeah, like, yeah. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, I was a delinquent in Spanish Harlem, and there was a shootout, 
and I scream my boyfriend's name, Michael, and then he comes, I know. That was a foreshadow. Oh, oh that was a total foreshadow. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. God. And he And he died too? What's wrong with wow. the Michaels? You keep we all the Michaels in your show. We did not die. Neither of us died. Serendipity. <laughs> Brett, can you hear me? I'm terrible. Um, yeah, no, it was the Law and Order, the regular one, and I got my SAG card, and it took the entirety of my paycheck, the dues, sorry, or the, like, entrance, right? And I had to borrow a little bit more from my sister to pay for the rest of it. Wow. But I paid it. Wow, I got in when it was very cheap to get in, so I'm that old. I think it was $500 or something. <laughs> I got in in the 1980s, I did a commercial, and that's what got me in my, my parent union is equity, actors' equity. And then I had the fortune to make some money with the commercial. Yeah, but oh, it was the 1980s, so it was like, what, $700 or something like that? Yeah, to get in. And you didn't need to do like, if you, were, if you couldn't audition, if you were not sag, blah, 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 blah. Things were different back then. Yeah. Good old days. In the, the good old days of another century. <laughs> I was an extra. Yeah. <laughs> yes. I got my SAG card uh, handing Alyssa Milano a tray on Charmed. Yum. Oh God, that's so cool. How did Wait, you not the fall apart? Charmed. Oh. It was so it was three days, and I had to dress like a like one of the guys from Three Hundred, <laughs> like a kind of like our show now again foreshadowing. Yeah, foreshadowing. And uh, I was so broke that I was in, I was trying to go to I was going to college, and I was a, a waiter. And my dad knew the producer of the guy on Charmed, and I wasn't trying to act; I was just trying to pay rent. And uh, three days on Charmed, and I got my sad card, and then. Two years later, I, I co-starred on Charmed, and Alyssa Milano did not remember me. Wow. <laughs> Believer. Damn actors. And I, um, I, I am also an immigrant, a pretty recent one actually, from Israel. Ow, ow. Thank you. Yes. yes. Um, yes. So I got my SAG card on Jane the Virgin. Yay! Yes. <laughs> Yes. But how yes. did you how did you work on on the other CW show? What about the other one? I don't remember the details, but Rain? no, Rain, Rain. Rain. in Toronto, and then the I don't remember. It was a whole process. Huh? Well, you yeah. saw your sad card yeah, the first time. Yeah. yeah. Only when I well, I just moved here three years ago, when we when the pilot got picked up. That's awesome. Wow. Yes. Wow. Nice. That's a good one. I loop back around and ask. Yeah, do you remember now? Are you ready? Do you remember? Just, <laughs> do you remember? Just, who's got IMDb let's, let's up? Let's just move on. Okay. Let's just, we can do because that. Because I, I truly honestly don't remember. And I, and I know it's because it's the fact that I'm ex extremely exhausted about flying from New York and whatever, or if my brain doesn't work right. I think it's because my brain doesn't work right. No, you're okay. exhausted. I think yeah, so. You're exhausted. But you're you know what's in the what's middle of this panel going to scream a movie's name and just yes. come to you <laughs> in like a flash. <laughs> You're going to be like, Tin Man. Yeah. We have no idea exactly. what's happening. Exactly. But by the way, we should be happy. I don't know if we have a Latino performers here that have work or are working for Telemundo. Any of you? Yeah. Congratulations. We are now a member of SAG-AFTRA, finally. Yeah. After, after so, so many abuses and so many, many years, yeah. we advocated that for you guys. It's, it was great that you came up through and that you had the courage to be a union member, así mismo, yeah. Well, I, I wanna ask, you know, this, this really just dovetails nicely into my questions. Um, Cause Jaime, I wanna ask you, you know, Rogelio's, a lot of his arc this year was about breaking into American television. There was like the uh, constant, <laughs> I have to be famous in America, I wanna be famous in America. I mean, did you also feel that same imperative or was it just happenstance that brought you? Well, you America? always, um, I've never, I've never sat comfortably in the mediocrity chair. It, 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 it itches a lot. In the what? In the me mediocrity. I'm making up mediocrity. words. Mediocrity. Mediocrity chairs. Mediocrity. Yes. Thank you. <laughs> I'm from Mexico. <laughs> the cutest person alive and, uh, is this one right here. Like you know, alive. I, for example, we use we use right now stairs and not electric stairs okay. when we came so, here. So side note: yesterday yeah. or two days ago, Jaime took me and Joe to dinner, and he said, "Gina, just go up to the fourth floor, take the electric stairs." <laughs> <laughs> Las escaleras eléctricas, chingados. That's a good description, though. Así se llaman en México, pues qué pedo. 
Bueno. I said these stairs so, are electric, aren't they? Yeah. I mean, they're stairs. If, you were, if yeah. you were an alien from another planet, so, you would describe them as electric chairs. But I, but you know. He is an alien from another planet. <laughs> chairs. Electric chairs is something else. Electric chairs. Oh, my God. But uh, just to go back to your, sorry, sorry Jared, I'm a little uh, That's what confused. You just we're said. tired. We're really and, uh, tired. Yes, we are. Uh, but, um, uh, yes, I remember. I forgot no, the question. You do remember. You do remember. <laughs> What was it? You, you're, you, mediocrity. Oh, yes. where are we? So of course yeah. you have <laughs> you have Hollywood there, and you have uh, you know many markets that you would like to to work on, like, like even Colombia, Brazil, uh, Spain, whatever. And uh, yes, in so uh, the opportunity, I I did the same thing that uh, the actors in in Latin American countries do. That you come here pilot season or whatever and you go to certain auditions and, and nothing happens because that's the nature of auditions 100% 99% of the time you will have doors closing in your face or 100% uh, sometimes but but it's you have to be you have to persevere and be disciplined Look for that open door exactly because when that open when that door opens it's a yeah it's a beautiful feeling but uh, so I was coming and I suddenly, I suddenly said you know what I cannot be doing this just coming here for one or two months in audition and then and then leave it's just it doesn't work that way. You have to commit. You have to. You have to really devote yourself to being in a market and be here. So I, I decided to do that. And after a month, they called me back from Mexico to do a, a project. And I'm like, no, I, I'm sorry, I can't. Whatever. And you know, the classic uh, Televisa kind of like uh, threatened my life if I didn't go back, <laughs> without even having an exclusivity contract or anything with them. I just I was like a free agent. I like I said, I, okay, so I'll, I'll go back and I do this. And and when I was in Mexico, I got the most beautiful call in the world, which we, you have, th for some reason, after auditioning for over 10 years, and auditioning, and auditioning, and you know, doors closing in your face, and pa 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 whatever, and finally, uh, they're like, you have uh, three uh, offers. I'm like, what, 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 is, what does that mean? <laughs> He's like, no, it's like, they, they want you to be in the, and like, what do you mean, they, but I should I audition? No, 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 they're offers, numb nuts, you're just, you just, <laughs> So, and I'm like, oh my God, does that, that exist? I didn't, you know? So I had three projects. One of them was Jane the Virgin, and when I read the script, it was so luminous and creative, and, and I said, yeah, this, this is the project. And of course, the other offer was for ABC, so you, my managers were like, oh, you know, ABC, whatever. I'm like, yeah, but the script is shit. <laughs> the script is bad. The script is really bad. Did this is the good- that other project? No, it got canceled. It, it, it didn't get picked up. So I, I chose wisely, thank God. Wow. Well, on the subject of auditioning, Andrea, I want to ask you, because since you've come into all of our lives on Jane the Virgin, incredibly as Zoe, I feel like every time I turn on the television, I'm like, oh, there she is in something else also, <laughs> all the time. So I, it makes me think that you, prior to, I mean, we, the auditioning, I mean, you've been on every Law & Order that's ever been made, that's I think, true. at some that's point. So that's true. a smattering <laughs> of characters. All of them. I mean, all in everything. Yeah, all of them. For you, I mean, what is your approach to auditioning? Do you like it? Is it something you just have to build up like a callus and get used to? Oh, God. I mean, look, I'm going to be straight up honest. Auditioning is still very hard for me. Um, I get very anxious about it. Um, I get really nervous. I, I have a funny story to tell you. Um, I, I recently shot a film with Will Smith. Ooh. Yeah. Oh, Check that shit on Netflix. You, I have to tell you what happened. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I think you guys as actors will appreciate this story. So I, I get this audition and my agent's here, so now he's going to find out the truth. But anyway, <laughs> it's okay. It's, it's okay. It's okay. <laughs> he'll, he'll love me for it because he was an actor too. Anyways, um, no, so I, I get this audition and I'm like, oh my God, I was so nervous. And it was to play this police captain and I, I wasn't you know, used to playing someone in who's in command. I'm like, oh my God, how am I gonna do this? And I was really, really nervous. So I tried to learn the lines as much as possible because that's one thing that I, I feel like to my advantage. If I know the lines as much as possible, I can just you know, be more freestyle when I get into the room. And so I learned the lines as much as possible. I get into the parking lot, and this is like total confession here, guys. So I'm like <laughs> leaving myself so vulnerable. <laughs> okay, so I'm in the parking lot. Oh, yeah, but this goes on YouTube. No, it's good. Oh, God, does it really? It goes yes. on the YouTube. No, no, yes, it's it good. Does. It's good. It's good. They, they will all appreciate it. So I'm in the parking <laughs> lot. And who drives by but Judy Reyes? And I go, oh, fuck, she's going to get it. <laughs> she's on her so good for this role. She should get it. And so I'm like, oh, God, I'm like, 
like torturing myself mentally sitting. Now, meanwhile, I'm a series regular on Jane the Virgin. Yeah. So, okay. so it never ends. I just gotta let you know right now, it just never ends. Yeah. So I'm like, okay, thank God you saw her because now you can like just like work on yourself before you walk into the, into the waiting room. So I'm like sat in my car for like 10 minutes, got my shit together. I walk upstairs, I walk in, and I see Judy. Hey, Judy, how are you? I see Justina Machado. Oh, mama, how are you? And I'm all like, oh homies. my God, all these ladies are so fucking perfect for this fucking role. <laughs> you're, you're like, I ju I'm just here to wish you all luck. <laughs> you're gonna do great. I brought cookies. I brought cookies. Oh, so anyways, I was so nervous. I could feel like, I felt like some, some of the other ladies were nervous too. And um, so anyway, they call me in. I go into the room, and it's David Ayers, the director, um, casting directors and everything, and I have the script in my hand, and I'm so nervous. Mm. So nervous to the point where the script is shaking in my hand. So it's like this. <laughs> and I could hear it rattling. <laughs> so I go, fuck! If I can hear it rattling, they can hear it rattling. <laughs> so what is the lesser of two evils? Put the script down so they don't see. Sorry, put the script down. And I go, I gotta go off of memory. Okay. And so I start and I forget. Of course. And I stop and go, I'm sorry, I need to do that again. Start again. Forget again. Stop it. No. No. Motherfucker. I am suffering right now. Yeah, me too. What happens? Oh. What happens? I got so fucking mad that I was fucking up that I proceeded through, it was a monologue where the police captain is talking to the entire, doing a roll call to her, all her police, police officers. I cursed through the entire monologue <laughs> so that I could get through it without stopping. So I was like, I fucking told you, and the F in this, and the F in this, and I went F to my way through the whole month. <laughs> and I got it out. Did you yes. get the role? <laughs> Did you get it? I got the role. Yes! yes! I love that story. Right. No, but the funny thing is, right? I'm sweating. I, I literally, I, I thought I was fucking up, really. I got through it, and I said, Okay, thank you for letting me get through that. And so then he let me do it again and then the lines were there, thank God. So I did that and then I had another scene to do and he directed me and I kind of like relaxed into it and I, I did my thing. I walked out and I was so mad. I called my best friend, I was like, Dahlia, I fucked up this audition. I don't know what's wrong with me. La, 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 la. And I'm going crazy, crazy. A week or two weeks later, Carlos Carreras, who's here, calls me to tell me that I got the role and I was like, what? <laughs> Judy, what about Justina? What about so Like I was like, I could not believe. So then G Justina was working on our show. And so she was uh, in the trailer one day and we were talking and she saw, she saw that I had gotten the role. She was like, oh my God, Andrew, congratulations. You got the role. And I said, thank you, mama. She goes, I knew I left a stank bomb in that room. That's what she told me. And I was like, really? And she goes, yeah, I was talking with Judy and she said the same thing. And I'm like, really? You got those shook. You didn't even know you had those shook. No. You walked in and they were like, oh, Andrea Nevado's here. Fuck. <laughs> So they were conferring with each other saying, I was so nervous. So they were nervous too. And they thought that they did horribly. I thought I did horribly. But the funny thing was that Justina said to me, they kept telling me, the director kept telling me, you gotta be tougher, like I, I wanna see toughness. And she was like, but I get cast as a tough girl all the yeah. time, like she couldn't understand. And I think the cursing through the entire monologue helped me. I was like, fuck this, and fuck that, and I was so mad. So there you go, that's my story. Or yes, it's kind or. of like, I can't, yes. It's kind of dope because like what I'm pulling away from that is that there's room for all of us and the roles are gonna be your roles. Right. Right? right? Like that's what I pull from that. And then we gotta have compassion for each other as well and like uh, just how hard we are on how each other. How hard we are and on ourselves. ourselves. Yes. I think the, the sucky part. Yeah. yeah, and I think the actual way, the only way I manage to deal with auditioning at all is never assuming I'm gonna get it. I always walk in there, including for the role of Petra, I walked in and I was like, I 
I'm look at all these girls. These are all these perfect, like trophy wife looking people. I was like, never in a million years. Excuse me? <laughs> yeah, what you talking about? Do you have mirrors in your house? <laughs> Do you own mirrors? No. It's one. You just and I was one. like, no, because I'm always cast as a goofy weirdo. That's what I've always been cast. Well, that's as. what you are for us, and because we love I you. I know. Well, that's what I am like on the inside. And I was like, I can't pull this off. Like, I don't look good in shorts or what? I don't know. And then <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I like shorts. No, but but seriously, but I just never assumed I'm gonna get a role, and and that's when you get you know pleasantly surprised. Yeah. No, I don't get all of them. Jesus, I just well, never assume I'm gonna get any. I just have to say, on the other hand, for Jane, I totally connected with Xiomara as a character and I totally connected with the whole pilot. So, I mean, I wasn't nervous when I went into the audition. I wasn't confident either. I just felt like I got this character. I understand her. And so I just went in there with that. So, wow. you know, every audition. And you know, I, I, it was the opposite for me. I didn't feel anything with when I read Alba. I thought, ah, oh, I'm retiring. What? <laughs> Spanish? No. <laughs> I paid too much money for my diction classes all these years. <laughs> what? No way. You know? And I said, uh, so they called me and I said, I have jury duty. <laughs> but it was the truth. I had jury duty. And I said, I don't, I don't think I can make it to this audition. So they said, okay, find out if you have the jury. So I, they called me, they said, no, you don't. Okay, so I can make it. Uh, it's in Spanish and English. What do they want me to do? And they said, I don't know. They might want you to speak Spanish. Uh, okay. But I didn't know. I thought I was going to be put on tape, but it was another show. I didn't know it was a pilot. I kind of, I was retiring in my mind. You know, I was with the pensions, three pensions, the social, I'm gone. <laughs> Yeah, and then all of a sudden, and I walk in there and I didn't know that it was the last audition, you know, for producers. Had no idea, there was only one woman there, and everybody was like this. And I'm like, yeah, what's up, you know? She's retiring. Yeah, what's happening, what's up, what's happening here, you know? You know and but, but, so I wanna, the truth is every table read, you look at that script like, oh, Spanish, oh. <laughs> Yes, I would like you still speak yeah. Spanish on this show. <laughs> no, but she had the one English sentence and we all she got like a standing <laughs> ovation. We're like, yeah, it's English. <laughs> it's English, yeah. No, but the thing is that I, I kind of like when I walked into the room and it was filled with all the producers, I'm like, hello, fancy seeing all of you here. Yes. Oh <laughs> what the hell? And uh -huh. And I said, so this is in Spanish. <laughs> What do you want me to do? And they go, read it in Spanish. I go, oh, what accent do you want? Yeah. What accent do you want? I'm Puerto Rican, I can do any accent. Yeah. And the producer from Venezuela goes, Venezuela. And I go, okay, that's Caribbean. <laughs> I can do that. Not Venezuela, but Caribbean, you know? Yeah, yeah. So I, 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 I kind of glanced into the words as I read it, and I acted kind of like, yeah. And they made me do it again. And then when they called me to tell me that I was going to test, I, couldn't, I could not believe it, you know? I went to test, okay. So I passed the first test. We go to the studio the next day. So I get there very early, and I'm like, I, Dios mío, I have to do this again. I cannot believe this. Oh. But you know, I think auditions are the real world of the actor, because that's when you prepare by yourself. Huh? So you're directing yourself, you're coaching, your, unless you work with a coach. But you know, but you go in there and you give a rendition of what your uh, vision of the character is, and I think that's the real craft. Yeah. More than having, you know, when you get the part, that's, that's the cherry on the cake. But the process, it's what makes us who we are. Yeah. Actors. And, and it is, you know, it's kind of painful. But, you know, giving birth is painful, you know. And, so that's what it is, you know. And when I went to the studio, they wouldn't let me in. They wouldn't let me in. They, I, you know, I turned off my phone. I go to the parking lot and I'm like, okay, oh. Um, I'm focusing with Strasbourg. Yes! Huh? <laughs> Stretch out that vagina, you know. <laughs> I'm doing all the relaxation and everything. I go into the lobby of the CW and I say, uh, 
uh, I'm Yvonne Cole. Uh, my name is there. And they go, no, you're not here. And I'm like, what? No, no. This is my audition. No, this, this is, ma'am, this is my audition. I am called. I am on the list. Look for me. No, you're not here. And I'm like, oh, my God. What am I going And so Lori casting director from the city that walks in, I don't know her, and they go like, Laurie, uh, this woman says that, uh, and she goes, abuela, and I go, well, I hope oh, I am the abuela, you, but here abuela. I am, you know? abuela, <laughs> abuela, bitch, nobody's abuela, <laughs> And that, yeah, and they told me they, they saw my tape. They, I didn't have to you do anything. You with anybody. You were the only one. But they told me they, they have your grandma. They already cast her. We already Look know who she is. Mira, tú sabes lo que es oír la gente hablando de decir otra cosa. I didn't know really that. Quick, really quick on, on what you said. Uh, I promise. It's, uh, so I love I the audition. I love the audition process. I, I do like it. I know it's very, it's just como... Um, Tell us about your self, audition process. Self-inflicting. I, I, I could have sworn I heard it's, that you set up lights. It, of course, yeah. <laughs> I self. I would like self-infliction, but I like the the audition process. It's the only like um, what you're saying, Yvonne. And I agree completely with you. It's the only time we're gonna get to be the the character as we see the character. So it's very important to go and really play with it and have fun and even though but and if you're there hungry for the part and or hungry to get the job that's going to come through and, and and the stress is going to you know throw people off and whatever but, but if you go there and to, because we we do this because we love to play and yes. we love to be on stage and we have fun but so to me the audition is the only moment and the only moment in, in the project that we have to present the character as we yes. see it and as we like it and that might you know surprise the producers or whatever but and also the, the audition process in Los Angeles it's it's a it's it's a very hostile audition in in uh, in in New York when you audition for for uh, Broadway or for theater it's beautiful because you go there and you have 10 minutes or 15 minutes and you have the piano and you have the directors and the this and the that and you have time to work with the director here it's different I was just you know? going to jump on what you said because for me, I feel like the audition process, the auditioning process changed when I, for so long, I was trying to be what they wanted me to be, right? So I'd get a script and I'd be like, oh my God, what are they thinking? She must be like this. Like, I'm sure they want her to be like this. I'm sure they want her to look like this and it's not me because how quickly we have our voice to go against ourselves so instantly. <laughs> Why we do that? I'll, I'll talk to my therapist about that later. Um, but... Um, <laughs> But so for so long, it was always me trying to become this character I believed they wanted the second I walked in versus like having that opportunity to take my craft, to take the technique that I've learned, to have fun and to play and to discover and to be like, this is mine for five, 10, God knows, three minutes. This one's mine. This is not what they think I want to or what I think they want to see. This is what I think they should see. And like that shit changed, right? And for Jane, go ahead. You can clap. Yeah. Shit, I, I say, you know what? Do it. I need it right now. Oh, I need it. No, I'm kidding. My self-esteem needs it. Thank but, you, hot Harpy. <laughs> did Harpy give me a nice little Yelp? I just said thank you, hot Harpy. Harpy. Um, <laughs> yeah, but I feel like that's when it like transitioned for me. And for for Jane, I went in with like all my home girls. Like I know so many girls in my age range that are Latina that went out for that role. I literally over 10 girls I knew in that waiting room, and I just remember thinking to myself, "What's mine is mine," and I'm gonna show them who the fuck I think Jane is. What's mine is mine. I'm gonna pick it back up because I need it for the rest of the day. I'm gonna pick it back up, I'm gonna pick it back up. But you know, you guys all bring up interesting points. Uh, because <laughs> You talk so fucking much. Oh, I got you, right? Because the, the thing about Jane the Virgin that's really interesting is I think it affords you guys as actors something you don't get on a lot of shows, which is a variety. I mean, I have seen all of you hysterically crying, fully in love, like goofy as all get out, sometimes playing two different people. And that's and just behind the scenes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And it's just like the breadth of opportunity I feel like that this show affords actors has to be kind of one of those unexpected things in that audition moment. You could not have known what lied ahead for this television show. I mean, yeah, would you ever have imagined you'd be creating two different entire characters who were related and... No, yeah. no. I didn't know it was coming until I read the script. I mean, just like the audience, I thought my character was getting killed off. 
I thought she was running away or getting killed off or something, and then his other squeaky character showed up. I mean, what was the <laughs> what was the process like for you as an actor when you had to figure out, okay, how can I create a Nezka and make her so different from Petra and also someone that I can play for theoretically now years and years? Yeah, well, I I you know so, saw this character show up and clearly she was written with an accent and I had a conversation with Jenny and Jenny told me. She jumps and she scratches and she's a ferocious eater and and to me that was very obvious that she has to be based on my cat. So she yelps when people come close and she kind of has this really high voice and like she's always afraid she's gonna get slapped. <laughs> like that's kind of like what motivates her in life. She's always like. And I wanted her to be the opposite of Petra. Like she's constantly afraid a giant hand is just gonna out from somewhere. And then uh, from the orphanage. And then. Um, you know, this, as an actor, you think of her backstory, like she was beaten. Um, anyway, never mind. <laughs> um, so yeah, but, but actually for me, <laughs> yeah. so I'm done. You crossed the line um, at orphanage. She hit an imaginary cat. We're sorry. Yeah, she's like, somebody hit a cat, I'm leaving. <laughs> 10 minutes ago, she was over it. <laughs> oh, anyway. So no, for me, actually, the most interesting part is what came later was the fact that I had to learn how to play opposite myself, which as an actor, you don't think about how complicated that is until you get to the scene and you have no one to act off. And you're kind of just like, oh, wait, shit, I have to figure out what I'm reacting to now that I'm going to be playing on the other side in like a week from now. You know, when I'm doing the other character, you have to come so prepared. So that was a bit of a learning curve there, like to figure out with the cameraman and with my wonderful, you know, body double Barbie. Um, I had to know exactly, I have to practice with myself kind of in front of, it's kind of awkward moments at home. I think my neighbors think I have multiple personality disorder. Um, you know, how you're, what exactly you're going to be doing and then remember that for possibly a week um, and do the other side of it. So it's, it's kind of And it's you've kind done of phenomenal. Yeah. It's so good. Thank you, guys. <laughs> Did anybody else do the split screen? Anybody well, you've done a I, lot. I, yeah, oh, you do like yeah, yeah, fives, yeah. please. When you have like slutty Jane and uh, whatever Jane and whatever Jane. She was never slutty. Yeah, I'm Dad. sorry, but you are. Oh, drunk Jane. Sorry. Yeah, I'm maybe sorry. Oh, drunk. Maybe drunk never Jane. slutty, Dan. Do you remember or no? No, I just wondered if anybody else had done it because Cecilia. it is a trip. Cecilia, bitchy Cecilia, bitch Cecilia, my bachelorette. But it is a trip to have to do like a split screen and then come back to it later. Yeah. So, yeah. And the amazing thing is that you actually, the director looks at it live. So you like, you do one side. And then when CGI you, on set. Yeah, exactly. And then you kind of like change over or whatever if you do it on the same day and then you see the other side and the director is actually looking at both characters interacting. It's kind of wild. It's crazy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You did, what was it when you did like, you had like three or four Janes talking to Jane the, yeah. the, the first season or something, right? No, second season. Second Bitchy season. Cecilia I think had Brad Silverling like Brad's directed that one. Brad, was it Brad? Oh. That yeah, was it. I mean. I don't, I don't remember. No, I think it was Eva Longoria. That was the, oh. the the scene that I did. <laughs> well we we get it <laughs> that I did season horse. three that I wrote a horse <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, no that I lose that my virginity so it was, it was like four four, four but yeah that has to be it, I mean it is super difficult but it yeah it's really trippy it's really trippy to do that yeah well in a in a different way I want to ask because this year had a three year time jump which in some ways afforded you all to create slightly different versions of your characters and I think no one sort of went through as much during that three years, aside from Jane, as Raphael, because he went into prison, he came out with just a beard for days. A boyfriend. <laughs> All the things. I mean. <laughs> Zen Raphael. And who goes to prison and comes out calmer? Yes. That's, well, that's what I want to know. I mean, Justin, when you and you know Jenny sat down to talk about Raph after this three-year time jump, I mean, what did you need to do? Did you fill in what you thought happened during that time, or did you really just rely on her to be like, he's very yoga now? <laughs> you know, Jenny doesn't give a lot of... She doesn't tell you a lot about the past or the future, which is really interesting because we can kind of create uh, whatever. Um, but I have, I do think it was a little more, you get to be a little more like yourself, um, a little more Justin than the Raphael before. And of course, when you grow your hair out and you grow your beard out, you feel different. You wear baggier clothes, so you're not like as, you know, tight and, um, and or, or as beautiful. Um, and uh, no, but it was so fun because as an actor, you don't get a chance to, on most shows, you don't get a chance to jump forward that often and, and, you know, be a different person or be someone that's had that experience. What's that? What's happening over here? 
the lady came oh, back. Oh, you came back for me. No, thank you. We thought we lost you, Mama. She just we didn't, didn't know we were doing this the talk, but she's back for Raphael's pants. We, we <laughs> take your shirt off. Yeah. Take your shirt off, Justin. She'll stay. Don't be jealous, I mean. uh, But yeah, it was no, it was a, it was a lot of fun. It was a lot of fun. It was good. Okay. I'm sorry. She might have said an orphanage joke that offended her. We we were we weren't That's sure. That's what we were thinking. Yeah. Well, I I want Too much of an imagination. <laughs> I want to turn also to this three years, Gina, that Jane went through after Michael's death. I mean, I was about to say spoiler, but you literally just watched the season finale. But everyone knows what happened. How, how is it? It's airing. How was it? It's very right good. Now. It, yeah, you had a you had a you had a very lovely wedding. Oh, thank you. It was very beautiful. Aww. It was very nice. It was very Aww. touching. We're I know. And I like that Zoe proposed. Like, I really did. <laughs> Sorry, I'm getting ahead of myself. Um, th I mean, this show obviously has asked a lot of you over three years, but I don't think anything in terms of emotionality of losing your husband in the way that G you know Jane lost him. I mean, when you were approaching that three years, I mean, how did you sort of come to a place with her that was sort of mournful but not just sad all the time. Do you think that was just a distance thing in the three years sort of helped with that? Um, you know, I, I got really lucky because what we did for this season was we did the first 10 episodes from uh, August to November, and then uh, Michael, the character, passed away in November, and then we had a month off, and then we got to come back season three, episode 11 in January. So for the month, me and Joe, my boyfriend who fucking rocks, um, we, uh, I just felt like the shameless shout out. I don't even know why I said that. I'm, I now feel really uncomfortable. Um, we, <laughs> yeah, who's hiding behind the pillar? We, we went to Thailand for a month and I wanted to, yeah, I know. And I wanted to, um, I wanted to physically like, I wanted my arms to be strong enough to pick up that little 50 year old nut job who I love so much, um, Joseph. He like climbs on me, he's like on top of my head all the time, it's amazing. But also, um, because I do feel like moms when they're like running after their child, they definitely get like stronger mm -hmm. upper build, um, it, you know, <laughs> just physically. But also it allowed me to go to a space where I can think about that kind of transformation of grieving and going through the process of grieving and losing. And I like I wrote to him while I was on, in Thailand, I would write to him, um, not really give anything to him, but I just kept it for myself so that I can write in the sense of my character. Uh, but I thought that that was very helpful, I think, uh, personally as an actor, just give me like a second to, to think about how now she's maybe a little more cynical, she's not as naive, she is sadly doesn't believe in romance the way she did before. She, you know, there are different things about her. She understands her judgmental side and she's not a fan of it anymore. You know, where before she was like, this is right and this is the way I am. Now she's like, why do you do that to people? That's whack you know and like to have that is kind of nice I think that the older we get that we m start to reflect on our character and think about the things that we we would prefer to be as a better version of ourselves what we need to work on I think we do that as human beings and I really wanted to do that for Jane so now Jane has a different approach as much as her storylines can be similar where she still does the things like Jane needs to be in the middle of everything Jane is you know it's like those things are habitual and domesticated and that's like who she is but she doesn't like that about herself as much anymore and so it was nice to start being able to like take a step back and look inside of scripts instead of being in them now I'm like I'm looking at Jane's actions as an adult would which is our like we start to think about our actions we think about our choices when we're a little younger I think we're a little bit more rambunctious and we jump on decisions and now I'm able to kind of look at it with the eye of Jane wanting to be a better version of herself constantly. Um, I mean, and w this is really a testament to the writing of the show, too, because it would have been very easy to put all of sort of the mourning on Jane, but there was that great moment, like several episodes later, that just came out of nowhere, where Rogelio was talking to Zoe and talks about missing Michael so much. And I just really loved that the show sort of paid tribute to a, not only a friendship that had, they had built on screen, but also like this is a person who was in these people's lives. Like it made it feel so lived in. And I think that the, the brilliant decision of Jenny to jump three years was because, you know, time heals everything. So, and if the show would have continued with the, uh, after Michael's passing and then the morning and the funeral, whatever, it would have turned into a drama, right. not, not a comedy. So, because time heals everything when we, pick up the show and also for the audience, which, you know, they like Jane, they like the tone of Jane, they like what we're doing Jane, and suddenly like, whoa, Jane, everybody's so sad and crying. And so 
for for the audience, it wasn't such a shock. And for for acting wise, after you go through something stressful as a you know passing of a family member, then time heals everything, and then you go back to your own self a little bit change and a little bit with a more mature and, and I mean more mature and everything but uh, but you go back to yourself and I think that's to me that was a justification of okay it's a three-year uh, jump so we can go back into being ourselves but the fact that we all showed a little bit of the of, uh, of sadness and mourning of, of Michael I think that was that was very a good idea from Jenny I don't think we had to really act it and this thing on I don't, I don't think we really had to act it out much because we loved Brett, the actor, so much and we all started together as a cast, the seven of us. And so to lose him was very, very hard. Nope. Very hard, especially for Gina because she worked most intimately with him and Jaime as well. But um, that was like losing an arm or something for us. And so even having the hiatus helped, you know, when we Personally, knew there was yeah. a, a specific end to when we were working with him too when we came back we knew it wasn't going to be with him and we had like a month off so that was definitely helpful and for us i think it felt kind of like losing two people in a way because not only did we lose you know working with our beloved brett our cast member who's our family and we're a very close cast um and we don't get to see him at work all the time you know we see him off but we don't have many off days <laughs> and then <laughs> and then um and then mourning the death of Michael, who in a way became our friend and our, you know, and we know he's a character, but we've grown to love our character so much. And and losing him was like losing a person. It was it was rough. It still sucks. Yeah. It still, yeah, it yeah. still sucks. I'm still Team Michael. <laughs> oh. He's right here, Ivan. Oh. He's right here. Abuela. Ay, abuela. I love you. I love you I too. I still love it you, has abuela. But you're with Petra now. What's up? <laughs> Spoiler alerts. I did. Or is everybody he? here. <laughs> I did kind Nobody's of. Nobody's team Petra. I did kind of love that the show, in the absence of the Jane, Raph, Michael triangle, kind of gave Zoe and Roe their own love triangle, and they were like the heat that fueled this season in that way. I mean, what did you enjoy about playing that, Andrea? Yeah. Oh no, go ahead. <laughs> No, no, Andre's on my name. Oh, the honeymoon is over. No, ah. no. Anyway, that's an inside joke. Um, so wait, what's the question? <laughs> the what? What Zoe got to do this year, sort of having these two polar opposite men, sort of warring for her affections. Yeah, I mean, and it was fun as an actor. It's fun to like get to do all kinds of like challenging things and comedy and drama and and getting to work with Ricardo Chavira was awesome because i i watched him on desperate housewives um so it was it was it was really nice to, i'm sorry i feel team like rogelio. team rogelio team rogelio it's so it's so funny no, no, that's fine. <laughs> it's so weird how i'm so glad we're married I, I mean, you too. won. Isn't that what matters? You won. So I really, particularly, also enjoyed the Alba love story. Yeah. Yeah. Alba is getting some, right? Yeah. Boom. Seldom ah. do we ever see. Seldom do we see. I mean, yeah, literally, she, it's ageism in in TV because in, you know, if anybody knows Abuela, she got. <laughs> I know. <laughs> you know? And she demands like certain things. You know. I mean, she doesn't get any. You know. Yeah, yeah. She wants. To see, an old, uh, to see you know, a She woman. holds on to her Catholicism. Huh? Yeah, to see a see woman of a certain age yes, to having see. a romantic life. Oh, is well, not, you know, you that's one of the that most incredible often. things that's happening to me in this show. Yes. I mean, to Alba. You know? <laughs> <laughs> me, Alba, who am I? Yeah. Because you seldom see or you never see a Hispanic actor of a certain age. Hmm? Uh, having a sexual encounter or having a sensual relationship. Look at that eye contact. Desires. Look at that eye contact. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. You know? <laughs> having a boyfriend, you know, instead of cooking all that. I don't cook in the show, I've seen, you've noticed, you know? They have Alba. Alba works outside of the house. She's the head of this household. She's brought up a real good family. These two girls are a testament to Alba's really upbringing of them, you know? So in spite of the fact that my daughter got pregnant at 16, but you know, she had the kid, you know, she didn't have an abortion, she had, anyway. So uh, yeah, this is very important that Alba has a boyfriend. No, this is my third boyfriend. It's like, aha, uh -huh. Alba is a little active huh? in the emotional department. the mustache guy. Yeah, I had the mustache guy from 
Argentina. was a creeper. Yeah, the creeper, creeper. And then the first one, I don't remember. Oh, Chich Marin, who was my first. Right. He was my first. Yeah, he was a priest. <laughs> so I fell in love. Alba is so yeah, slut. That's interesting. Alba is, so, Alba is so religious. She falls in love with a priest. <laughs> and now I, uh, I have Jorge. And Jorge happens to be an illegal, uh, no, undocumented person in this country. You know, he comes from another part of the Americas. And uh, that's what it is. And so let's see what, where that takes us in the story now, because... <laughs> He's a very likable character. He's a very, uh, he's a wonderful man for Alba. So where will that take us now that my daughter is married, you know, and my granddaughter is back in the house? Will I get married? Will I um, have an affair instead of getting married? Uh, will I, I relinquish so. to my principles? Mm. Uh, <laughs> No, but also, I mean, just Here let's on. point out for a second that it's not very common to see, and that's another testament to yeah. the great writing, that yes. all these characters Jenny. are, you know, sexy women yeah. and men. Thank you. And all these characters, the women, are moms. Yeah. Yeah. And uh -huh. two of them are grandmoms. One of them's a great grandmom. <laughs> like, and they're considered sexy and sexually active, some yes. of them. Well. And, <laughs> you know. Sometimes. Sometimes. Um, but that's also not normal. I think that's, you know, that, that says something about moms being able to be sexy. Yes. On television. And that's a testament to Jenny Snyder. Get pregnant, as a okay. Writer. <laughs> yes, she is. Yes. yes. Um, well, like a woman. <laughs> to do that first. Anyway. Well, I want to ask because I'm getting a hook sign, but. Um, <laughs> but I know. I Listen, I know. I don't want to end it either. But I want to I wanna <laughs> go down. No, no, no. I'm going to. Uh, so, but I want to finish on this question that I'm going to ask each of you because, you know, we've talked a lot about the opportunities the show has afforded you as performers and with the material, but I, I'm curious, like, you know, about the challenges you've faced with this show. I mean, what has been, and Yvonne, I'll start with you. I mean, what have you, what has been sort of your biggest acting challenge with Jane the Virgin? Uh, being so Catholic, so, yeah, so stern. I lived in a commune as Yvonne for a year, you know, in a hippie commune. I'm a very liberal, open-minded person. I'm not a mother. I'm, I don't have any children in real life. So um, I kind of play my mother, who never had any grandchildren either. But she is, certainly I know what a mother is because I had my mother. So that's what I'm trying to do with Alba. But it's challenging because I've never had the experience, like the maternal experience. I, and I guess uh, Gina is going through that right now because she has to create it out of her imagination as an actor. So that has been challenging for me. And th the fact that she's so strict and so um, set in her, a little bit of 1950s kind of ways, you know, very Eisenhower era, I think, you know, in the way. And I was brought up in that era. So I understand, that's why I play her that way, because I, I saw it in my hometown. I saw it in my aunts. I saw people like that. So um, it has been very challenging for me, but I am so grateful to life and to Jenny and to everything and to the universe that this came when I was about to retire as an actor. That's why you should never, ever, ever give up in anything as an actor, you know? Yes. You know? Yes. Never give up. That's this, how late it came to me, a serious regular. And there it is. I could take care of my family, my life, and all the good things, ah, and of my older age because I don't have any children. So who takes care of me? Money. <laughs> I was like, I'll take care of you, Abuela. I'll do it. We don't need you. We need money. Oh, well. no, money. She, she has got money. All money. Yeah, she doesn't need. If you have money, you can pay for anything. You know, for your health, for anything, for people to take care of you. You know, oh, but yeah, if you yeah. don't have, eh. that's awesome. Yeah. What about you? Thank you. But the most. Oh. Um, so two things. First of all, I think I spoke about it earlier, you know, with the, with the two characters. That, that took like a whole new acting muscle of development there. And then I think for me the most challenging was also the character of Petra is so different than anything I've ever done before. I've always been, you know, cast as the, the good girl, the goofy girl, the, the funny person, and then character, ca pet character. Petra was so strict, so stern, so hard on Jane, and so tough, you know, and... And, um, and justifying the things that she does, understanding where she's coming from and not judging her, kind of 
understanding that it's coming from a place of self-defense and a place of wanting of survival and a place of um, actually protecting the people that she loves, whether it's her nutball mother or you know other people in her life. Um, yeah, so I think that was it. Justin, um. for me, it was a little, <laughs> it was a little different. Um, Whoever you are, thank you. <laughs> Jane, so for me, Jane the Virgin was my first job acting again, and because I, I had actually, speaking of, I had left acting because um, mm. it actually was so hard. I wasn't working, and I had lost my house. My house went into foreclosure, um, and I was making documentaries. Um, and kind of following the that passion and for me getting this job was my first audition really back in years and I was super intimidated because of how talented you guys all are and I remember I can't I can't even watch the pilot I can't even watch the pilot because I just remember what I was thinking the entire time and how in my head I was because I'd been a director for the last two years and I and so my biggest challenge over the last three years has been um, getting out of my head because I, I'm really hard on myself and I look at, sometimes I watch myself as I'm acting and Gina has been amazing at, at helping me in some of those ways, <laughs> you know, because, well, we talk about it and, you know, for the, and I'll be super honest because we're a room full of actors for the first, I would say the first two seasons, I would oftentimes, I would like put on this like, oh yeah, I got this and then be terrified. Yeah. Um, and it wasn't until the end of, I think the midway through last year, where I was like, hey, Gina, wow, can I ask you how you would look at this scene? Because I'm a little, and she's like, oh my God, you want my help? <laughs> she's like, yeah, okay, and we started going through it. And then like, because there's this, you have this thing as an actor where something, you know, for at least for me, if I admit that I don't know how to do something or that I don't get it or I'm insecure about something, then suddenly, suddenly I'm, I'm vulnerable and I'm open and like I don't want my partner who won a Golden Globe to think that she's acting with yeah, yeah, yeah. right <laughs> no I'm just as an example and by the way it's for everybody because when you're surrounded by greatness you want to like rise to the occasion and it was so nice to be able to be open about that challenge because oftentimes I feel like though and I'll st I feel like I'm the worst actor on the show because I'm so in my head. Because and no, no, no. But this is true, and we have to be compassionate. No, we, but it's okay. It's allowed. We're allowed to say it yeah. out loud, and it's important because how many doors do you get closed in our faces where we do feel like we're the worst actors, where we don't get jobs because we feel like we're not good enough because we're comparing ourselves to everybody, and that's okay. And it's okay to voice it because then you don't give it strength anymore. So, so for us, it's been about. It's just been about that and like opening it and. Yeah, she's like, look at her right there. She's like, I'm so, <laughs> she's my girl. So yeah, so that's been my biggest challenge is like jumping back into acting and being okay, being okay with that. Side note, if you have not watched the documentary series that Justin did that's on CWC, it is incredible and you will weep for days. Yeah, It's so great. Um, okay. He's gonna direct this summer, his first film. <laughs> uh, so, uh, Andrea? Um, so the biggest challenge for me hasn't necessarily been acting per se, but it's been juggling my personal life and being able to come in and bring the level of acting that I need to bring to the show. Um, so I have two kids and I, I'm a New York actor and I had to relocate here um, for the show. Um, when I say had to, it's like I'm complaining. I'm certainly not complaining. It's like I got to relocate, I should say. Um, but, you know, I had my kids here. Well, the first season, my kids were in New York, and I was traveling every two weeks to go back home to see them. And that lasted for about nine months. And then my husband was like, I can't do this for another year. You take them to L.A. Because he couldn't, he can't move his business here. So then the kids have been with me here for the last two seasons. And it's just, you know, getting them reacclimated into school and getting new friends and, you know, just just handling them, it's a full-time job, and then also handling a series regular role, which is my first series regular role. So that has been super challenging, <laughs> um, but I, by hook or by crook, I've managed to do it. And um, you know, and it's and it's, it's I I feel like I, I do it for my kids in a lot of ways because I want them to see that being a mother should not hinder you from your dreams. Um, and that you, you need to live by example so that they see, oh, my mom got this job, this like dream job where it's like most people don't think you can actually be a working actor. 
Um, it's like an impossible dream. And my mom went for that, you know, f whether she was scared or not, and didn't let being a mom stop her. Like, that's not a block. It should never, ever be an excuse. Um, so that's that's been the most challenging. And, and I'm, I'm st it's still challenging because now my husband and I have decided that the kids are going to go back to New York. Yeah. And I'm going to start traveling again. Um, and, you know, it's for a lot of reasons. I won't go into them. But... You know, it was just like, I, I, it's not, it's just, I'm not here just thinking about myself. I'm thinking about the bigger picture and, and what the decisions that I make affect three other people, my son, my daughter, and my husband. And, you know, that's not easy. So. Yeah. Uh, to me, I think that uh, it's uh, making Rogelio not this superficial clown, but to, but to give him some kind of, depth like yes it is perceived as a comic relief and he lives in this outrageous universe and he says these ridiculous lines that they are in the book i don't make this shit up and um but i think that we ha you really have to try to execute them with uh, sincerity and with honesty otherwise uh, you know i think that's the the clue for on jane the virgin on, on jane the virgin all of the actors we come from our guts out we don't come from the tip of our nose out and I think that makes a, a big difference when you're doing comedy because you have to approach comedy with a lot of seriousness and, and with a lot of respect. You cannot approach comedy like, uh, I'm going to make you laugh, I'm so funny, I'm so funny. It's like, no, no, you're not. So, and, and also, <laughs> they write very good material for Rogelio because you can see him saying these outrageous things. You know, I want my daughter to have the pleasure of knowing me. And instead of you going like, what the, f what? I'm like, I want to slap that guy. For some reason, you go like, Hmm. <laughs> like that's no, so wrong, I, and that's so wrong. By the way, because it's a testament to you, though. As an I actor, love you. Because other no, I can't actors, imagine anybody else doing it. No, Can you other, imagine anybody else playing any, Rogelio? Not any, in a million years. Anyone else would totally like beef up the whole uh, conceit of the character and make it into a clown. And it's you bring a lot of heart to it, and you and it, you under, it, and are conscious about that. Thank You're aware you. because they write that those moments when Jane calls him dad for the first time when he. He mourns Michael when so those moments when you know he tells you that he loves you uh, or it's just those the moments are there yeah. and I think the challenge for this role in particular is to make it believable and to make it honest and, and sincere and not just like a superficial guy that throws pies at your face and it is a pleasure to know you love you okay. <laughs> I love these humans we human. love you too Gina, what about you? Biggest challenge the show has presented you as an actor? Um, Just, you, you only have to pick one, though. Oh, man. The question has makes, all the my, challenges in the, I mean. makes me sweat. Um, <laughs> it makes me sweat because, you know, when I first did the show, I, I felt so lucky, and I still feel so lucky because I'm so, so in love with the writing and so lucky. Um, but we came out the gate, right? And it was like six episodes in, slapped me with a Golden Globe. I was like, oh, shit oh shit, this can't stop. I gotta keep bringing it every single day. <sighs> what if I fail? What if I fall? What if I trip? And I just, um, am rem I am afraid of that every single day because it's like so much pressure. Uh, but then I have like all these badass people to catch me and they catch me every single time. So I know I'm not gonna fall because I know that they'll catch me, which is fucking awesome, <laughs> which is the best in the world. But um, damn, I love you guys so much. It hurts. Um, but it's all scary, dude. 15, 16 hours a day, five days a week. You can start in the morning with comedy. In the middle of the day, you're bawling for someone's death. Then you got to come back. You got to laugh again. And then it's 12 o'clock at night. And they're like, oh, yeah. And you have this one more scene where you walk out and you just start crying. And you're like, hold on. I just walk out and start crying? <laughs> <laughs> Nobody's gonna say anything to me, nobody's gonna talk. Nope, you just walk on out and you just start crying, bitch. <laughs> and then my head starts spinning and I'm like, are you sure you didn't want this? <laughs> um, so, um, and, and, then, and, then, and then the challenge ends up being, 
I think above all challenges is staying present and grateful because that shit can fall real quick because you could be like, wow, everybody says yes to me. Nobody tells me I'm wrong. Nobody tells me what I'm doing is dumb. So you have to hold yourself accountable. You got to be like, that's not right. You can't speak to people that way. That is not cool. Take a breath. Go in the corner. Take a nap, Gina. You know, like you have to, in a very unaccountable industry, you have to hold yourself accountable. And that ends up being probably the greatest challenge. You feel me? Because then you're like, yeah, you go from zero to 100 real quick. <laughs> and like that ends up being the challenge but I do have an amazing I, ha I have amazing foundation a lot of wonderful people that like that make sure that that's con consistently happening but and also you got to stay present because this is going to have an end this it will end Jane will end I know that's Never. crazy to even say right but it seasons. will I know 2070 yeah <laughs> exactly we're just gonna be like Meh, all of us here we're just old we're still having babies yeah <laughs> We're just um, reproducing. Yeah, never having sex, just babies. Um, <laughs> <laughs> the greatest challenge is being a virgin and pregnant. Um, yeah, yeah, but that, that I would say that that that's definitely. Oh uh, no, but say, uh, yeah. Oh, oh, go ahead. You you're gonna talk about. I'll Gina, just do right? it. Yeah, real yeah, fast. Yeah. Just oh, this I girl. Love. This girl. <laughs> I mean, if the lead of your show, the person who is there for 16 hours, five days a week, without one day off ever doesn't keep everybody up, that nothing can float. Like, it, it can't work. And this girl, without failing, every single day, shows up with a huge smile on her face. She can be worked to the ground, she'll be, on her weekend, she's doing press, she's promoting the show, she's promoting all of us. And without failing, every single day, she just shows up and keeps us on our toes, and keeps that. us all happy. Stop, I'm gonna start crying. I can't look at this girl crying <laughs> without me shaking my cup. <laughs> Stop and it. this is what you do to the Why are we the shooting world? so that we can use this for later crying? Jenny, Gina, walk out and cry. <laughs> but I did at the SAG conversation. But she, I mean, she keeps us happy all the time. And our set, no matter how hard we work, we're always happy. Our cast, our crew, like everybody's just so grateful to be I'll there. And it, it starts with her and with Jenny, yes. who's our incredible creator. And you know, when, when the top two people on, on a project are so happy and so grateful and so present and yes. so wonderful and so aware and so careful with everybody around them and so constantly giving that I mean it's just been you're a dream come true season four Jane and Petra hey. ow what <laughs> Jetra is alive <laughs> Jetra. Okay. no but I think it's really important um, to, it's great that we're talking to a room full of actors because um, you know at some point you know you're gonna get to a place a level that you wanted to be that you've been inspiring to be and it's important to remember where you've come from and to re keep those humble beginnings with you all the time. Because um, I'm happy to say that I've heard from many sources that our set has been dubbed, has a reputation for being the happiest set on earth. Yeah. Yeah. And so many actors say that about us, so many directors say that about us, crew, I mean, so many people say that about us. And it really was a conscious decision that we made as a cast when we shot the pilot, that if we ever got picked up for series, that we were going to remain humble and grateful, know where we came from, and bring positivity to the set every day. And, you know, Gina, she's got a lot going on. She has every excuse in the book to come in with an attitude, to come in and be negative and all that stuff, but she doesn't do that. And it really, yeah, it really trickles down, but um, it, it's, it's a conscious decision that at whatever level you're at, you need to make it fun. You need to bring positivity to it. It's a choice every single day. And um, I don't know, I just wanna say that because I think it's just so important to bring that. Even like today, we, we had a marketing shoot for season four. It was a grueling day after being in New York for um, additional press that we did as a cast. We flew in late last night. And, you know, it's like I'm operating on five hours of sleep. But, you know. For the past week. You got five hours of yeah. sleep? <laughs> God damn. You're privileged. I'm being robbed. <laughs> no, but the thing is, it's like you bring it. But you heard that five hours. <laughs> five whole hours. Oh, you. But the thing is, it's like, we made it fun. Like, we totally had a good time today, no matter how tired we were. We were like, no, we're gonna have fun. This is like, and, and that's how it should be. And, and, and I feel like, you know, to spread that word of positivity, because it's, it's infectious. And, you know, there are gonna be other shows out here in this audience that are yet to be born, but they will be born in the yeah. future, and yeah. you guys will be part of it. Yeah. And hopefully you'll yes. remember that positivity that you'll bring to it and it, it's infectious and it just passes along just like negativity does. Really? Yes.
really dope like minor baby story is when we were all testing right because we I, I tested with a few a few people and I tested with Justin and we had already auditioned like 25 dudes I had tested with like 25 dudes you know like no bull like lots of people like lots of people auditioned and lots of people tested you know and um and, and Justin was way towards the end, right? So way towards the end. Then we get to Justin, we audition, and I, I felt the flavor. I was like, oh, you know, like, you knew. No, no, not even like that. <laughs> What's wrong with you people? Guys, my boyfriend is in the room, okay? No, I'm kidding. No, 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 but like, no, but I, I knew, like, you know, he had all of what the character was. Like, I just knew he brought it, and, you know, and, and they don't let me stay in the room, right? So after we test, they're like, okay, you know, actors gotta leave, too. Like, I had to leave, too. They weren't gonna talk about him in front of me, right? So I leave with him, and Justin and I go to another room to sit down and talk to each other. I'm just, I'm That's when it all happened. No, I'm kidding. Um, no, so we, we sat down and, and we started talking and we started talking about like love and appreciation and, uh, and using uh, your art for good and for change and for a purpose. And I was like, oh, dude, I was like, that's, that's what I'm about. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's what I want to be. That's what I want to be about. And he's like, yeah, that's what you want to be about. I was like, yeah, that's what I'm trying to be about. You know, and, and, we, and I was like, I have a feeling you're gonna get this. And he was like, oh, you don't even know that. I was like, I have a feeling you're gonna get this. And when you get this, we gotta make sure that that's all we have the entire time. And he was like, down. They walked out and they were like, it's you. <laughs> and then we were like, baby, baby! <laughs> 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 oh, yeah. It was, we, t we were, the, the exact words we said, and I'll never forget, because we were talking about God. I clearly and forgot. And Go making, on. No, 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 no. But I'll <laughs> never kidding. forget this. But I'm it was kidding, this the idea that no matter what happens or how much success or fame anybody gets, it's about putting God in that work first. Yeah. And then so, and what we were talking about was praise him. And then literally, we looked at each other and we're like, and if this goes, that's when the real work starts. Yes, it is. And 30 seconds later, they walked yeah, in. Yeah, and then, then we were like, oh shit, damn, didn't <laughs> know we were starting that quick. <laughs> <laughs> we and look at what she's done. Him. Oh, and look at what he's done. Ah, yeah, yeah, basta. I mean, honestly, I've been telling you guys for three years, if you did a cast speaking tour, I would come. I'm just saying, just, you know, just like inspire us in these venues, 100 people at a time. You guys got time. You slept for five hours, Gina. I mean, come on. No, I'm just kidding. Um, thank you all so, so, so much for being here tonight. Thank you. Thank you to all thank of you. Thank you guys for coming. Watch Jane the Virgin next season on The CW.